All right, it's electrical day today again. Um, today we're gonna focus on the AC side of the bus, meaning the shore power side of hooking things up. So our bus came with 30 amp shore power, which looks like this. So, and this is the cable. Uh, this is actually the cable that it came with. We already took it out. So we are switching to 50 amp, um, primarily just for the flexibility. There are down converters. We can down convert it all the way to a 15 amp, just plug it in somebody's home extension cord type thing. And the nice thing about a boosting inverter is it will allow you to do that. But for the maximum flexibility, we wanted to go with 50 amp. If we're gonna go ahead and redo it, um, 50 amp made more sense. So um, we bought the cables, and so the cable is significantly larger. So this is a 50 amp cable. Um, it is much, much larger. And the cables we got have a ton of insulation. So we've got this cable to route through the inside and then we've got, we bought, this cable here is gonna be our actual, our shore power cable. So this is, this is the one we're gonna use with this type of end to, to plug it in at like a, at a, like a RV park. So in order to do that, we then had to buy a power inlet. So um, the power inlet that our bus came with, um, basically you pulled the cord through this little plastic hole uh, that they had drilled out and then you would plug that in and that was the cable that I showed you but um, these are a lot nicer because if you damage your cable or something happens um, you don't have to go rewiring a bunch of stuff you just get a new cable and they're not cheap though <laughs> the cable I think was I think it was like $130 or something just for the shore cable so this is the um, they, they call this a power inlet so it flips up and the cable comes in and it screws in and, and it's watertight and it's secure. And these are actually made for boats. So they're actually waterproof and stainless steel and stuff like that. We also needed to get a 50 amp breaker and a breaker box um, because uh, our Victron is not, it doesn't have a breaker in it. So it explicitly says in the, uh, in the instructions to fuse it with a 50 amp or a 30 amp, whatever you're gonna use, fuse it, or I'm sorry, put a circuit breaker in it. Um, so this is the circuit breaker. It's just a spa circuit breaker. Um, so the last piece that we bought was um, the surge protector. So we went back and forth um, between, are we gonna get a surge protector that you just plug into the pole, or are we gonna get one that mounts inside? And we finally just decided with the mounts inside um, because they're pretty pricey and we just felt if we stick it on the pole, there's just one more thing we can leave there or forget about or whatever. And they're, I mean, they're a couple hundred dollars, so they're not inexpensive. So <laughs> it's just one less thing we had to worry about and it'll be in the bus and it can be, you know, it can always be on. We don't forget about it. We don't accidentally plug in without it. It's just always there. So we thought that's just gonna be one more thing that we don't, we don't have to worry about. So these are the things that we've purchased to uh, do the AC side. So that's what we're gonna focus on working on today. All right, so we're running our wire right now and we've drilled a hole in this little panel that we made up here. And so the big heavy wire will come in through there, down through the bay and then into the inverter and then into this bay where we plan to hook up the 50 amp breaker. We've hooked it up and drilled a hole. Now we've left some extra cable in there <clears throat> in case we have to go back through and um, pull this out or work on it or anything. Um, it's really hard to be cramped up inside the bay and so we've left some extra cord so it pulls all the way to about here. So you can actually, if, if the fittings, um, we have to redo the fittings or something is wrong, we have to check something, we can pull the cable out and actually work on it. So um, this side was fairly easy. We just crimped on some, uh, some lug nuts and then um, put those lugs on to the inverter. Um, they're labeled. So um, 50 amp has two legs. It has two hot legs, um, red and black in our case. And we only use the black one. 
So um, our inverter doesn't have provisions for using the other hot leg. So we haven't done anything with it. We've just kind of, we've heat shrank it and capped it off so that it, nothing can, can um, short it. But we've also, there's just no, there's, there's no plan we have for it right now. Um, what that would mean is if we were plugged into 50 amp shore power, then we could only use the things that are on that leg when we were plugged in. And that just isn't a desirable situation for us, so we chose not to go that route. All right, so now we're on the other side of the wall. Um, you see the, the hole we drilled to get the cable through. We were actually pretty surprised by the thickness of the cable, but um, this is the 50 amp breaker that we have going actually into the inverter from the shore power. So shore power comes in through here and then goes in through, uh, through the wall and then into our inverter. And like I said, we only use uh, one of the two hot legs, but um, it'll carry 50 amps. So I wired this in yesterday and it pretty much took me all day. So these, um, this is actually a little spa it's a it's a it's a spa breaker and they are just really I've never done one and it's really hard to manipulate all the wires and stuff in there unfortunately um, two houses down our, our good friend is a master electrician he's been doing it for some like 20 years or 25 years so he came and um, checked it all out and made sure we wired it correctly and all that stuff and gave us a thumbs up and sort of explained how everything works and how it's supposed to work so um, it helps to really have friends who know this stuff and know what they're doing so um, he, he, he really has helped us just try to plan this all out and so here we can see how it's all wired in so um, it should be wired in correctly at least according to him and and um, so um, everywhere we have this wire going, we have these um, stress relief connects. And he said it's, it's very important that that be on the insulation. So that's what he told you. He's like, it, it can't clamp the wires. It has to clamp the insulation. So we made sure that it was like that. And so it's secure everywhere. And this isn't, this isn't going anywhere. It's, it's pretty tight. So we've drilled it up, up into the box and and drilled the box into our little wood frame and so that gets it up and out of the way and doesn't eat up too much space so um, we're pretty happy with the way it turned out there's still another cover that we have to put in but we wouldn't be able to show you any of the wiring or anything so um, when this is done we'll put the cover on there and and probably put something on this little lock mechanism just to just to keep it closed while we're heading down the road um, just to make sure it stays closed but um, we're pretty happy with the way it turned out. All right, so the AC travels from our breaker and then it goes through and then this is the AC bay and we can see the wire down there. It goes up through, comes up the other side and then out over here. So we have not hooked this up yet, but today's project is going to be um, to do a surge protector in this bay. So we'll do a surge protector and we'll probably mount it up onto the roof so it's up out of the way. And then to do the power inlet. So we'll try to wire the power inlet today, which is gonna involve cutting into this door, um, which we're a little nervous about. But um, So it'll involve cutting into the door and then putting in some kind of mechanism so that when the door folds down, the wire has enough room to flex and not uh, and not get kinked up or anything like that. So um, that's the project for today. We'll see how far we get with it. All right, so we've wired up the surge protector and it comes with plenty of instructions and uh, relatively detailed books. This is the Progressive Industries 50 amp EMS HW50C. So it comes with a pretty detailed set of instructions on how to wire it up. So we think it's wired up, right? So we're gonna mount this up on the roof. It's gonna go upside down and up on the roof. So one of the things that was a little strange about this is um, they assume that the ground plug was six gauge when the standard on these is that the ground plug is, um, is an eight gauge. So we had to change out the lug. The other thing that's a little weird is these guys get in the way of that mounting screw right here. I don't know if you can see that. 
So we don't know if we're going to have to loosen these up and kind of bring that thing back and then put it in and then mount those back in, which is probably what we're going to have to do. Um, but we got it wired in. It wasn't, it wasn't terribly difficult, so I think we got it right. All right, so this is the hole that we've chosen, the space we've chosen. Um, we're going to maybe use this one as the water inlet, so we've chosen this one to be the power inlet. Um, we've patched plenty of holes on the bus, but this is the first one we're drilling in, but for some reason we're nervous about it. So anyway, here goes. turning back now all right time to drill the the hole I have to use this enormous drill <laughs> because the um, the chuck is the only one big enough to accept the, the bit so anyway, um, this was my dad's um, and I remember as a kid when I was a little tiny kid he had this and it actually broke so we had to redo the the wire but it seems to be working really well now so here we go Ready? Okay, so the reason we drilled the hole first is so that now we know on the other side that's exactly the center. Um, so that's the reason we pre-drilled we pre first. Um, so that should work. We'll get it fixed up. So now we can drill this one from this side. We'll see if it works. Okay, we just got done wiring uh, our power inlet. So we chose a Furion uh, 50 amp, 250 volt one. So it's nice, this little cap spins and it'll come up. And so there's our connection. So um, we also bought a big giant cable to go with it. And so these are new, so they're gonna be a little stiff, but it goes in and then it twists to lock. And then this guy, just kind of goes on like this and creates a weather tight uh, seal on it. So um, that's the way it'll hook in. Um, the only real, the, it went in relatively smoothly. Um, pretty self explanatory on the install. It's even color coded on the back for red, black, white, and green for our four wires. The only thing that was a little uh, difficult about this is. The screws, when we originally put them in, um, it came with kind of cheap hardware that it looked like it was just like a chrome-plated skinny screw, maybe like a number, maybe like a number six, maybe. So we put in stainless steel number eights, and I think they are going to work a little bit better. So, um, so we've wired it in, and then on the inside the way it hangs is as the door opens it needs a little bit of slack so it needs a little bit of slack in there just to get it to uh to for, for it to open with the door so uh, other than the one little hiccup um it went in relatively smoothly so that's our ac power um it should be all done and ready to go we've wired it um, one uh through the surge protector and then through the AC bay, and then into our 50 amp panel, then through the wall, and then down and into our inverter. So again, we've only wired one of the legs. So we wired the black leg, and the red leg, we just um, we put a heat piece of heat shrink over the end, and then just kind of tucked it out of the way where it wouldn't interfere with anything. And the reason we did that is um, we could have ran a three wire cable 
but just in case in the future if we wanted to run uh, 200, 220 or if we got another inverter and wanted to supply power to that one through this wire, that option is available. So the next step in this project is to wire in a 50 amp uh, RV plug at our box. So our, our box, our ele electric box is actually right here. Um, and we have a neighbor who is a master electrician. So um, he's gonna help us with that so we don't screw something up or get ourselves electrocuted. Um, he's been doing it for, I think like 25 years. So he's going to come in here and, and um, wire it all up and then we'll, we'll be able to test the shore power.